Hey, what's up guys? I've been meaning to put out this review for a long time, and I'm finally making another attempt in giving this a coherent critique. I actually had this review recorded and edited, but listening back, I got really way too worked up, and I didn't like what I sounded like, and just the way I was coming off, I just sounded really hot-headed. Well, after a while, I've, you know, calmed down. <laughs> I read this book a long time ago, so I think I'm ready now to just give this a rational, spoiler-free review. Um, I'm going to be making a second video with spoilers, so I can specifically rant about what I really don't like. So check that out if you've already read the book, or don't mind the spoilers. This book takes place right after Clone Wars Season 6, and was actually intended to be a Season 7 story arc before the show's cancellation. Many of you who are familiar with the Expanding Universe are already extremely familiar with the character Quinn Voss, and may know the very gritty portrayal of Asajj Ventress from the Dark Horse comics as well. Well, this story tells a tale of the two banding together to assassinate Count Dooku in the hopes of putting an end to the Separatist movement after Count Dooku commits like a huge host of atrocious war crimes. Before I get too deep into the criticisms I have for this novel, let me say that Christy Golden is an experienced writer, and much of this storyline was obviously handed to her by the Clone Wars writers with the, expect with the uh, expectation of her turning into novel form with what she was already presented. So many of the story elements of this novel were destined to happen from the start, regardless of who was chosen to be the author. This story is very well written, and flows together nicely for the majority of the novel. It begins to feel really rushed and scattered towards the end, but not to the point where it's unreadable. New characters that we have never heard of before are interesting, and I actually found myself wanting to learn more about them. I found the Jedi Council meetings uh, and the debates that were happening within them to be fairly thought-provoking, and I did enjoy the ethical concerns of the assassination attempt amongst the various members to be a very cool idea to explore. It really gives you a sense of where um, different council members' morality is about the war, like wh where their ethics um, start and end as far as the assassination attempt that they're allowing to happen. The uh, descriptions and scenery are really spot on. It is immersive enough so that you can paint the picture of the imagery in your mind and really feel like you are there. The descriptions of the Jedi Temple on Coruscant are really particularly uh, very pleasing, as well as the scenery, the scenery in Dathomir. Christy Golden's writing style makes it really easy to get lost in the world she's telling of, and I find her imagery extremely fun to get into. Unfortunately, however, the stellar imagery is not enough for me to enjoy this novel, and I think many other Expand Universe fans are going to end up agreeing with me. Now, I'm not one of those Star Wars fans that is constantly bitching and moaning about the retconning of the Expanded Universe. I accept that it is no longer canon, and honestly, I really do not even care because I'm going to continue to enjoy the material anyways, and pretty much consider whatever I want to be canon, canon regardless. But for those of you who grew up like me and read the Star Wars Republic comic series for years like I did, this book is going to leave an extremely bad taste in your mouth. Quinn the Boss is essentially the face of the Expanded Universe, and this story of his fall of the dark side is but a shadow of the EU story. It's not that it's completely new and different. No, I mean, that's to be expected. Why would they tell the same story over again? It's the fact that this new supposedly defining story of Quinn the Boss is not anywhere near as interesting nor seemingly defining to the character. Not only is the story lacking the thrills and rushes of the Republic series, Quinn the Boss seems as if he's an entirely different character, many of his defining characteristics completely missing from this novel's portrayal of him. Having this story given to us in novel form almost insinuates that this will be a relatively darker story than the ones normally told on the Clone Wars anime TV series, as the story doesn't have to concern itself with fitting into extreme censoring that TV demands. There should be no problem in allowing Quillen to be himself. Now he is certainly not written in as the dumb surfer dude we saw previously in the TV series, but again, he just does not seem himself. Not only is Quinlan seemingly watered down, but Asajj seems emotionally unscathed from the happenings on Dathomir during the TV series. As someone who is normally portrayed as a twisted and immensely dark character in other mediums other than the Clone Wars, this novel seemed like the perfect place to canonize her past viciousness. Her portrayal in this novel is relatively similar to the one shown in the Clone Wars TV series, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing in my opinion, I personally think it is acceptable. I was just expecting and hoping for more from her in this book, and I have to say I am pretty disappointed. Keeping in tune with poor portrayals, General Grievous is represented in the worst possible way yet in this novel, even more so than the Clone Wars TV series, and that really is saying something. I really miss the days of when General Grievous was feared 
and almost seen as something of a freak of nature. And again, he's just made a running joke in a story, just a dumb brute. Uh, I made a video talking about how I feel about uh, General Grievous' portrayal in the Clone Wars TV series, so check out that video if you get the chance and if you're interested. Now this isn't really a spoiler at all because it's pretty much implied, but uh, the romance between Asajj and Quinlan feels so forced and just completely jagged. There's hardly anything natural about it, and it just isn't given enough time to develop properly. Instead of feeling as if they are two forbidden lovers, both being pressured by different obligations, they feel as if they are nothing but two middle schoolers having some summer camp fling. I did think a romance between the two would be extremely interesting and enjoyable, and I normally hate romance stories but it simply just does not have enough time to develop in order to feel authentic. I feel like this would have been a much better idea if this uh, book was a two or three part book series. Now I'm not going to spoil this here, so if you want to hear my full opinion on it, you're going to have to check out my other video, but my final critique is that I am not a fan of the ending. Not at all. Not in the least. So in conclusion, this is a book I'd recommend to someone who really doesn't know anything about Quinlan Boss, as past prejudices will not impede their ability to enjoy this fairly well-written novel. I think you'll find the story unique to what you're probably used to from the Clone Wars, and any fan of the TV series should dive into this book to satiate any sort of desire for some closure of sorts from the show. The ending may seem a bit rushed, but I do think you'll enjoy the awesome atmosphere of the novel, as well as some decent character interaction. However, if you're someone who is a big fan of Asajj or Quinlan from the Expanded Universe, I would not spend your money. Maybe borrow the book from a friend or just avoid it altogether. Uh, the Quinlan Voss we know of remains in the EU, and you'll gain more satisfaction rereading Star Wars Republic than you would reading this novel. I guarantee if you're one of these EU fans that you'll end up a bit hot-headed as well after you finish the book. So those with high blood pressure and a love for the Expanded Universe may not survive the trip. It honestly would have been so much better of an idea, in my opinion, to just remove Quinlan Boss altogether from this novel and put in a new Jedi character to team with Asajj. And for those of you who aren't overtly familiar with Quinlan Boss from the start, that's pretty much what this novel is. So your ability to enjoy the book will be a lot more likely than someone with knowledge of Quinlan from the EU. Doing the best I can to set aside my prejudice for this novel's portrayal of some of my favorite characters, I give this novel a 6.5 out of 10. Stay tuned for my spoiler edition rant on this novel and check out my other videos for some Star Wars related content. Thanks for watching and please subscribe, and may the force be with you.